Hi everyone, I'm Soumya, a software engineer and an educator. Welcome back. This is module three of the interview series. In this module, I'll teach the important interview questions of mobile app development. If you are going to give an interview for the role of Android application developer, or if you are going to give interview for software engineering, but specifically for Android team, then this tutorial will be very helpful for you. You can use this as your revision point. You can revise all the important questions and concepts for your interview. So let's get started. Number one, the very first question is, what are sensors in Android? So in Android devices, in the Android devices, there are plenty of built-in built-in sensors built-in sensors they are used for different purposes like for measuring you know temperature or for understanding the position of the device etc i mean there are plenty of uh, divisions like there are plenty of types when we talk about the sensors in android so there are like parameters include parameters on basis of which these are divided are motion to check the motion of the device the orientation or you know uh, temperature and such physical conditions as well so these sensors help to monitor the positioning the uh, movement of the device with high accuracy with high accuracy and like many of these are inbuilt only and they can be both software they can be both software as well as hardware based in nature and the three like prominent categories are here when we talk about sensors in android the categories are position motion and environmental sensors these are the main three type of sensor so the name is a bit self-explanatory here but still uh, let's see uh, what each of these do okay so position sensor it is used to measure the physical it is used to measure the physical position of the android device of device okay and these include like orientation sensors or magnometers magnometers and if you talk about motion sensors so these sensor include uh, gravity rotational activity and acceleration acceleration sensor okay that means it measure the rotation it measure the rotation of the device of the device or the acceleration and parameters related to it okay and talking about the environmental sensor so it includes sensor that measure temperature pressure you know humidity some environmental factors and others as well like there are multiple environmental factor so the environmental sensor is used to measure such parameters now moving ahead to the second question how do you find memory leaks in an application on the android platform very important question so the android device manager that is your adm android device manager full form for adm this is uh, this kind of helps to find memory leaks memory leaks in an application on android so when you open adm in android studio if you have been developing android application you would be knowing that we use android studio right so when you open adm in android studio you can see parameters like heap size or memory analysis memory analysis along with others uh, other parameters when you run the project so these parameters are very important in adm like when you will open up adm in android studio you will see these parameters and these are the ones which help you find memory leaks in an application perfect and the third question is state the component which are must for a new android project so i think you should be able to answer it on your own because you would have created multiple android project right that's why you are here in this tutorial to understand the concepts and everything so let's let's still go through each of these uh, sometimes it happened that we know the concept we know the we have the knowledge we know this stuff but we are not able to communicate properly right so state the com components which are must for a new android project 
so the very first one is manifest manifest file right secondly uh, we have the build directory right we have the build directory then inside uh, that i mean we have uh, multiple files again uh, but let's let's first uh, check at the upper level what are the important directories and files which are must for it so you can kind of in this question if someone asks you this you can uh, go through you know the structure of the android project so we have manifest file which contain information like permissions we have permission user permission whatever uh, is there in the app you will mention all of these here then icon or name of your uh, name of your application apart from that which uh, you know activity will be the launcher activity launcher activity like sometimes we have to change to a splash activity from main activity as the launcher activity so those are stuff you can modify you can check from the manifest file then you have build and then src directory is there right which contain all the uh, code and resources apart from that you have res 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 directory which contain not non code resources like bitmap images bitmap images or ui strings all those stuff and then you have assets as well you have assets so these are kind of important files and in assets uh, i mean it contains a file it contains a file which can be converted to an apk file as well then AQ, apk file you can share with someone who want to let's say run your application in your phone in his or her phone uh, if the application is not yet live on google play store still they want to check it then you can share apk file so inside asset there is a file which can be converted to apk so we have manifest build src so inside build we have that uh, gradle file right in which we add all the uh, dependencies the third party dependencies right third party dependency dependencies like for images you have uh, picasso if you deal with apis etc you have retrofit wally etc and then you have source directory res and assets moving ahead we have to name the different data storage options which are available on the android platform so number one shared preference shared preferences okay so it stores data in xml in xml files okay and then you have sqlite which is very famous right it stores structured structured data in private database in private databases and then you have internal storage as well internal storage so store you can store the data in the device file itself like uh, you would have seen if you have some application uh, even whatsapp and other such stuff they have they kind of create a folder in the device itself in your android device you will you will find some uh, folders with the name whatsapp or com dot something like that the package name right uh, inside file manager i think so yes i mean you can store stuff in the storage uh, of the device as well and then you have external storage as well in case you are interested you stores it stores the data in the file system but it can be accessed to all apps in the device right uh, not specifically to uh, to that particular app so if there are some data which you feel should be accessible by all other apps in the phone then external storage apart from that uh, you have firebase as well right you have firebase as well which is very handy and easy so you can explore that as well so these are the kind of different uh, data storage options which are available for the android platform perfect explain aidl so it is important aidl you should first of all know the full form the full form is android interface android interface definition definition language android interface definition language it is a tool that let user abstract away it is a 
tool that lets users abstract away IPC not very common term I would say but you must know it is a tool that lets user abstract away IPC now you will ask me what is IPC so using IPC the client and the service both you know communicate with each other and this AIDL this AIDL communicate this AIDL facilitates that communication facilitates facilitates that communication so in short you can say AIDL is a tool it is a tool that lets user abstract away IPS okay not very like commonly asked but yeah some interviewer uh, might ask you these you know uh, abbreviations or such terms which are not so common so apart from AIDL define the architecture of Android so if you know the architecture let me know in the comment if not let's let's discuss here so when we talk about the architecture of android so it consists of five main components five main components okay let's discuss on a new page so the first one is linux kernel okay and then you have platform libraries platform libraries android runtime okay then android applications and finally you have the android framework framework let's quickly uh, these are first of all five components which you must know by name so let's quickly see what is the function etc of these so talking about linux kernel it forms the basis it forms the basis of the android platform and this powers features like memory and power management and various drivers as well so it serves as abstraction layer it serves as of abstraction layer before the other layers okay and then you have platform libraries so android's platform libraries are native c and c++ libraries native c and c++ libraries and they provide support for graphic graphic and media graphic and media and webkit libraries as well so it allows developers to implement graphic functionality and display the web content web content display etc all these stuff are possible because of these platform libraries and then android runtime and this is also called as art and the core libraries are among the most significant part most significant part of the significant part of the architecture it serves as the foundation for the application framework and has features like optimized garage collection and then you have android application this is what uh, we see when you when we use our phone then we have those icons we have applications right and uh, yes uh, like the core applications include inbuilt ones like sms or email some contacts these are the pre-installed apps which we see in our application before installing you know zomato amazon all those stuff we have these pre-installed applications yeah and then we have application framework this is not android this is application okay this is application so the application framework contain classes that are used in the creation of the application it contains classes which is used for developing for creating the applications okay all right so these are the five main uh, components when we talk about the architecture of android the very first we have linux kernel it forms the basis of all the components we have platform libraries we have platform libraries so c c++ libraries all these are native are uh, all these are part of platform libraries and it helps in graphics media all those stuff like 
we are able to see things like web content etc all this is possible because of these libraries then android runtime it is most significant component of the architecture and it forms the foundation of this and then we have android application this is kind of self explanatory you can explain it you use applications in day to day life right so you can explain how how the applications are what are the pre installed or kind of inbuilt applications present uh, these are the ones which are already installed and present and then you have android framework it contains classes which are used for developing the developing the application perfect i hope this much part is clear right moving ahead this is very important question i would say this is very very important so is there any difference between activities and services obviously yes there are differences between both of these so activities in short let me let me tell you so activity is something which you see on your apps screen um like whatever you see on your app screen the page the activity the screen that is your activity that is this is very much uh, you know related to uh, ui i mean uh, it is all about what you see on the screen and when you talk about services they are made and they are supposed to run in the background in the background okay now let's talk about the differences in detail activity activity and uh, services okay so if you talk about activity so it is entry point it is entry point for interacting with users right it represents a single screen it repre re represents a single screen with a ui for example if you open up let's say an email application okay so you see some cards with inboxes uh, right some new mails if you are on the inbox uh, menu so you will see new mails so that is screen that first screen is your uh, is your activity only is that's one activity and if you click on compose button and you open up a new screen so that is a new screen and if, let's say paytm app as well paytm is an application for money sending etc right so there as well let's say you are on um, the home button so that is one screen when you click on pay now or send money so that will be a different screen so those are whatever you see that is your screen now talking about services services general purpose entry point for keeping an app running in the background in the background for uh, for multiple reasons let's say you are using a music app right so it is supposed to run in the background uh, like like a spotify you can run you, you know start the music run the music and continue using some other app continue chatting messaging uh, sending messages on whatsapp etc so these are made for background i mean there are multiple stuff which are supposed to keep running in the background so services are for that purpose okay it is a component that runs in the background to perform long running to perform long running operations or to perform work for remote processes a service does not provide a ui it does not provide a ui to the user okay it has no ui ux for example service a service might play music in the background right or maybe perform some download upload operation in the background so you would have seen multiple times some download upload uh, going on in the background in the notification manager you would have seen right so uh, that is kind of role of services only and uh, yes uh, it has ui it has ui it has no ui ux right this is main meant for background stuff and this is meant for like mainly how the user is interacting right for interaction purpose and this is very important for you user experience right so activities are very important for user experience and um, yes uh, that's pretty much it when we talk about the 
differences between both and moving ahead what are android frameworks so android frameworks these are set of apis these are set of apis that make the development process that make the dev process easier it makes the dev process easier developer can write apps quickly developers can write apps quickly because apis provide tools like text fields intents etc it is essentially a software toolkit that allows for quick construction of the skeleton of an application okay so basically android framework are set of apis which help us which help the developers developing the application in an easy manner in an efficient manner it becomes the development process becomes very easy and smooth with the help of these android frameworks all right i hope these are sorted you know what is android framework set of apis to make our life easy activities and services these are the architecture architecture of android mainly five things are here for different there there are layers right the basic is the linux kernel and last one android framework android app you already know so aidl android interface definition language it is a tool that lets user abstract any ips that's it not very common thing and you should know what are the different ways of storing data because in an interview if you are going they would be having the application for their company for their clients right and obviously when there are application when there are users so storing the data in a good manner in a good way is important and that's why you will indeed get questions around database how to manage data in the android so you can go in deep as well you can develop application using each of these or any one of these whatever you prefer okay and moving ahead we have to explain the android activity life cycle with example so this is kind of very important fundamental question and i would say it's kind of million dollar question if you are going to give an interview for specifically android application development role this is the activity life cycle for an android application so in this universe everything has a life cycle if you talk about simple water bottle right so water bottle also has a, a life cycle it is manufactured in the industry chemicals etc are mixed and then you know it is used by us by human beings and then it is destroyed in the same way the android applications that we use Uh, like gmail zomato youtube etc we use uh, for for chatting for entertainment purpose for looking at tweets etc there are so many things that we do using these applications right so uh, that also has a life cycle like as user we just open up the app so as soon as it is opened up in the background some operations are going on some methods are being called and as a developer for us it's important to know what those methods are when a user is opening up the app when the user is minimizing when the user is destroying the app from the memory what all is going on uh, from the code perspective for users it's nothing like they are using they are chatting watching videos and then they are minimizing it switching to other applications or uh, completely destroying it from the memory clearing cache etc so let's talk about the methods let's talk about the code perspective behind the life cycle of an android application it's very important okay so as soon as the activity is launched let's say you click on the youtube app okay so the very first method that is called is on create then on start and then on resume so first thing first on create is call it is uh, used to create the screen create the page okay because mostly most of the apps have this splash screen as the first screen so when you click on that icon uh, when a new screen comes up then in the background on create on start on resume these methods are called one by one back to back one after another so on create that means the page the screen is created okay then it starts it and then on resume okay uh, you are uh, let's say watching the video so on resume will be called so activity is now running okay 
uh, and uh, let's say you are watching a tutorial on youtube okay let's say you are watching this tutorial only to revise all the concepts and suddenly uh, you see a message from your friend that hey let's come to uh, come to my birthday party at this place okay so uh, you got a ping from let's say whatsapp the that's another application you are right now on youtube you are learning something new you are watching a tutorial and then you got a message that hey today's my birthday let's let's join us in the birthday party okay so what you will do you will immediately like uh, if you click on that notification you switch to another application you switch to another application then what will happen to this one what will happen to the one which you are using so here on pause will be called that is it will pause the operations which are going on and the activity will be no longer visible to you youtube will be no longer visible because you are now on whatsapp you are chatting with your friends and then uh, on stop will be called okay on stop will be called once you are done replying to them maybe you are saying you are busy and you cannot come you are done with chatting etc you will again come back to youtube so once you come back when you come back then on restart is called after on stop on restart is called it is restarting everything it is restarting the page and then again on start on create because it was already created the screen was already created the page was already created so after on restart it will again con on start and on resume you will continue watching the tutorial on resume is going on then if again you want to go back to another application then on pause on stop will be called if you'll come back then on restart right so uh, you uh, like when you click the home button uh, then usually what happens in the memory the application is still there in the memory the app is kind of running only and uh, if you want to let's say close the app completely maybe you are checking the uh, you know distance between your house to the destination where your friends are celebrating the birthday party etc so you will let's say open up the google maps application you will check the distance etc you will check the route and then uh, many times we click on back 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 button so what does uh, that perform what does that do we are kind of completely destroying the activity we are completely destroying the application it is a good practice to save the memory right so in that case let's say you are opening up google maps okay so on create on start on resume one by one back to back these three will be called these three will be called and then activity is running activity is running but you are still kind of using only activity is running but uh, you are not kind of going back to another application so this cycle like on pause on stop these will be not there but uh, suddenly like you feel that okay i'm done with the application it's it's done i have checked the route then you will click back back okay you will continue pressing back back button so in that case what will happen on pause operation will be paused then on stop uh, activity is finishing or being uh, you know it is kind of uh, not visible to you okay it's not visible to you and then once you press the last back button then on destroy the activity is shut down it's even not in the it's even not in the memory okay so that's how the process is but if you just press the home button then on pause on stop uh, but it will still be it will still be in the memory and if you want to go back to that application then on start will be called but if you completely want to destroy it then you press back 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 and that's how it's completely destroyed it's not even in the memory right it's not even in the memory so uh, that's kind of the summary uh, for this the activity life cycle this is very very important and now uh, here priority etc comes into picture it's not too much important it's not kind of integral part if you talk about methods so uh, number one first method second method third method these are always any time when you open up any application these three will be called then this is fourth method fifth method sixth method and seven there are a total seven methods which you must know how they are functioning how they are functioning one two three four five six seven okay so these are always uh, called whenever you open the screen open the page and when you are willing to go back to another app or you are pressing back 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 button on pause on stop will be called if you completely want to destroy on destroy if you want to reopen then on restart will be called so this is the life cycle of any of any android application that you use in your day to day life so if you have doubts about the life cycle or any of these uh, you know uh, abbreviations or terms keywords that we discussed about let me know 
and I will try to answer most of them. I hope this detailed module was helpful for you. If yes, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to Scalar's YouTube channel for more such insightful content.